15 years into this process and we've gotten as far as a renewal of indirect negotiations, right? They're not even sure that they're going to directly negotiate anymore. This is how tentative the whole process is. The one thing that they have agreed on is that um, Ehud Barak is going to be the first one to walk into the room, okay? That's, that's, that's a major accomplishment, okay? And of course, typically, they have all these secret agreements that they've already agreed upon, which just haven't come out, you know? You know, you only can kiss on the cheek, and you don't have to call the morning after, and the second stage, of course, is going to be marriage counseling, you know? All sorts of these uh, basic issues that they have agreed upon, but it, it's not going anywhere. But uh, Bibi is confident, you know, that uh, uh, the Palestinians will once again blow up these talks uh, before anything serious happens. Though he did uh, this week, I don't know if you know, is Yom Yerushalayim. But we will not be celebrating Yom Yerushalayim this year because Bibi told Obama that we will only celebrate Yom Chetzi Yerushalayim. We're only going to celebrate Western Jerusalem this year. So, okay, another stop to the uh, process. It's not uh, going to go anywhere. And, of course, the Palestinians are just eating their hearts out, right? And because they realize that had they put their money where their mouth was, if they slipped a good bribe to Ehud Olmert, they would have had a state long ago. I mean, you know, you don't have to be brilliant to see that a man who can be bought can be bought for anything. And actually, Ehud uh, Olmert is among the best friends that the Palestinians have, okay? He has accomplished what the Palestinians couldn't do, what the American administration couldn't do, what anyone couldn't do. He has single-handedly put a halt to building in Jerusalem. You know, with this um, process, you know, and all the scandals, there, there's no building going on here, and it's all thanks to him. All thanks to this oily land, you know, or uh, uh, holy... Uh, Holy Ehud um, uh, uh, Parsha Teeth, as we call it, you know. And uh, right, the latest news is that there are actually two clerks in the building department who have not been called in for investigation. And uh, the police have decided that they're not going to invite uh, Rav Ovadia in for, um, uh, what would you call it, in for a, as a witness because they can't understand him, you know. Have you ever heard Rav Ovadia yourself speak? It's just, you know, Shas is in the uh, crosshairs, but uh, they're not going to write him. Anyway, and uh, tonight is the 40th night of the Omer. I don't know, you guys don't count the Omer, but of course 40th night is uh, um, six arrests and two state witnesses for the Omer. You know, that's the, uh, that's the currency of the Omer this year, is uh, what's happening. And Shula Zaken, I don't know, you guys don't look like you know too much about... Uh, the ins and outs, but anyway, Shula Zaken, who was the longtime secretary of Ehud Omer, you know who she is, right? She just came back uh, willingly, unwillingly from Los Angeles, and of course, she had the greatest of umbrage, you know, how can you deny me the uh, path to sneak through customs like everyone else, you know, that's what she's hoping to do. And then on the other hand, all her friends said, well, you know, Shula, look, you're going to get stopped anyway. How about trying to get in a couple of cigarettes uh, and some bottles of whiskey for me, too? Didn't work. She was back and whoosh, straight to the slammer for a week. Now she's home. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, Omer, you know, he's just, he's basking. He's, you know, because you know, they haven't called him in yet. They tell me, I, I told you that the Rishon Tours and the Investment Center and Talansky were small potatoes. You know, nobody believed them. And now uh, it's going to happen, right? He's, he's in uh, big, big doo-doo. <clears throat> and, of course, his, um, the guy who came after him, Uri Lupuliansky, you know the name? Anyway, he right the subsequent mayor of Jerusalem, and he uh, um, he is of course basking in this. You know another way in which the secular and the Haredim have gotten together again. You know that they both uh, the, the the greasy palm uh, goes. Uh, it doesn't matter how how uh, how much you swear in the Bible. And of course, this way. Anybody know how many years that we celebrated independence this year? How many? How old is the state? 60. 62, excellent, Sandy. So, 62 years, and of course they had all these supplements. The, for me, the best supplement was the 62 favorite bribery scandals of Ehud Olmert, right? This was uh, near the altar or something. It's just, it's just a laugh right? okay? So, the best line in the whole thing was uh, um, Aliza, Aliza, his wife, says to him, you know, Ehud, with all these jobs you were passing out, couldn't you have found a few for these policemen who are now pursuing us? I mean, you know, it was... Whatever, it was a laugh riot, day. who's really uh, the man of the hour. And this week, uh, right, apart from Yom Chetzi Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem there's going to be a 
a rally for the national leftists, okay, in Zion Square, okay? So, of course, the police are already ready for the congestion at the entrance of Facebook, but even more than that is what is a national leftist? I, the definition of national leftist is that you hate the Arabs more than you hate the settlers, okay? Now, that, that makes you, uh, that, that, you know, puts you right in there, okay? Anyway, and then the other news, uh, among the other news this week, was there was a officer, a Bedouin officer named uh, Imad uh, Farkis, right, okay? You know who he is? You know the name? Okay, anyway. He gave his wife his car to drive, and then he lied about it, and she got into an accident. Anyway, so the army, and then he said he was going to resign, and then he didn't resign, and so the, the, this week they finally kicked him out. So, uh, anyway, right, the, the background. So, the, the joke was, of course, that not only is he being expelled from the army, he's also being expelled from his Bedouin tribe, because he gave his wife his car to drive, and nobody knew. Bedouins don't do that, you know, that, that's not fair. And then, of course, there's lots of other news. <clears throat> the, the usual sordid uh, minor involvement in uh, gang rape. You know, really ugly, really uh, t typical Israeli uh, news. Okay, so how did the uh, what was the how did they come to an agreement with the prosecutors that these guys would all write on the board a uh, hundred times, "I will not do this to a neighborhood girl again." You know, that was the. Uh, and, uh, and the education ministry, what was the response? Was that they came up with a new method for the matriculation exam that you could now take it over the internet, either from your jail cell or from the emergency room, you know? Prepared for every kind of uh, eventuality. That's the way it goes. And this week, of course, we had the Teacher of the Year Awards. Uh, I guess if you don't read the newspapers. And sure enough, they were able to find five teachers who in their classroom had no felons or victims. And these teachers first deservedly got the uh, Teacher of uh, the Year Award. And, uh, you know, this week over in Beverly Hills, right, uh, four to one, the city uh, council voted to uh, rename the street that runs in front of Temple Emanuel Herzl Street. Yeah, very good. In honor of his 150th birthday. Yeah, very touching gesture. But of course, nothing is that simple. You know, they really did this because the next season of, you know, Beverly Hills 90200 will be Corner Herzl. You know, that's the way. Uh, and, and of course, they have the icon. I, I don't know, much, you guys know uh, Zionist lore, but there's this picture, uh, this iconic picture of Herzl leaning over the balcony, you know, looking out as he's here. And of course, the caption is, you know, here I founded the. Mosheva Yordim, you know, where the you know, the community of Yordim in Beverly Hills, whatever. It was a good time. It was a good time for all. And uh, also this week we had Obama had his um, White House correspondence dinner. Okay, so uh, he was actually very funny. I, I'm uh, if you uh, watch my stuff on YouTube, uh, the Daily Slog, you'll find me. You'll see that I'm not really a fan of Obama, but he was uh, he was really pretty funny. <clears throat> he starts out with, you know, the real laugh getter, right? Uh, the Shimon Peres line that it, this year we will have peace in the Middle East. Yeah, I got a lot of laughs. Huh. And then he goes on to ask, anybody here from Ramat Shlomo? You know, he starts a well dialogue. He, he, he really was pretty good. And then uh, also this uh, past week, right, this big news in New York, right, was the uh, bomber in Times Square, Faisal Shaharin, or whatever his name was, this Pakistani. But of course, the first question, obviously, in everyone's mind was, where did this guy find a parking spot in Times Square for his SUV? I mean, you know, that, that was a no-brainer. That was going to come up. And of course, he was driving a Nissan. He had originally rented a Toyota, but of course, he realized, you know, well, this might actually endanger my life. So he quickly got to a Nissan. Right, you know, and, and in fact, the, um, the, uh, the car most stolen in um, New York City is a Toyota, but really most of them aren't stolen. They just sort of, you know, uh, take off on their own. That's, that's, that's the way the Toyotas go. And of course, he, he did this alone, you know, that was the whole phenomenon. I mean, he didn't even tell his bomb that he was going to do this process, so that's why none of it uh, worked out. And then uh, his parents, of course, you know, had sent him to... Uh, actually, he had been to a terrorist camp, right? That's the story. And of course, you know, as we're talking about some of what kind of a parent would send their kid to a terrorist camp, you know, but uh, whatever. He did, and uh, this, this uh, was the result, you know. And of course, the phenomenon was that he was on the plane, almost ready to go to Dubai, you know, and they, they called him back from the gate, you know. 